Hello and welcome to VIEW's Partner Interview Series. My name is Sophie Taylor and I'm Partnerships Director here at VIEW. In today's interview, I'm going to be speaking with Mara Salat, who's Director of Programmatic Trading at JC Deco Norway. I'll be speaking to Maris about the benefits of programmatic and out of home, the different types of screens that they deliver for clients, while starving into the latest projects with the trade desk and sightline. So let's jump straight into it. Um, Maris, a bit of a two-pronged question to start you with, but what has driven the rise in popularity of programmatic digital out of home in Norway and how has JCDCO adapted? Hi, Sophie, um, and thank you. Um... Programmatic, you know, is something that the Norwegian market has been ready and waiting for for many years. I say this because we um we have been very a very digital out of home market for for over ten years now. I would say uh, share of revenue from digital out of home is over over fifty percent in total and over sixty percent for us at, at JC Deco. So so this has led to a pretty advanced uh, way of selling. Uh, direct um, clients have been pushing for for DCO and weather triggered campaigns uh, for many years already. Um, as of recently, DSPs have begun to express more interest uh, and started to prioritize this more. And we have, yeah, been waiting for different DSPs to have um, more de demand for our market that is, of course, rather small and and doesn't necessarily come first uh for them so so we're super happy and thrilled that we are finally able to 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 sell programmatically and that this is starting to to gain momentum in our market yeah definitely i know it's something we've spoken about previously uh, your work with the trade desk and sightline can you tell us a little bit more about that project and how you've been working together Sure. Um, only as of this summer, we started working together with the, the Trade Desk and Group M on, on programmatic digital out of home. Uh, it's still fairly fresh and new, but the launch of Sightline in the Nordics um, and with their buying tools, uh, Group M are now fully prepared to offer their clients a best-in-class buying service. And now only half year in, uh, they are already one of the most active agency groups uh, in the Nordics on programmatic digital out of home. So, so I'm really positive and, and they are as well. So uh, they are keen to, to push more of their business towards programmatic um, in Nordics and, and in Norway. Um, that's, that's the market that I know the best, but uh, it's it looks really good yeah definitely i'm definitely a big group to definitely be working with more regularly and to see grow which is fantastic to hear can you talk us through the types of environments for your screens and the wider opportunities it offers the nordics definitely uh we offer screens in um or across three different environments which include malls transport and uh, transit uh together with roadside uh, panels. The, the legislation in Norway is, is rather strict and therefore uh, roadside digital is, is still quite new. This is an area where we expect to see a lot of digital development um, um, in the coming years. Transit and malls are more or less 100% digitized and, and has been for many years. Um, the Nordics in general are starting to become more digitalized with, with our colleagues in, in Sweden and Denmark um who will soon have their inventory available for programmatic as well uh finland is already live uh however um the two markets and then i'm talking about sweden and 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 uh, denmark uh they, they have their reasons for not being live already both markets are kind of available uh for programmatic just not with with jc de uh in sweden and denmark uh, something my competitors are happy for, I guess. Uh, therefore, uh, clients are able to activate programmatic digital out-of-home campaigns uh, across all Nordic campaign uh, countries. Sorry, uh, with a mix of of uh, JC Deco and the other vendors. Yeah. So um, we have screens in pretty much all environments in all countries, I would say. Yeah, and obviously, as much as 
Sweden and Denmark's not programmatically enabled yet. It's a case of watching this space for those countries, for JC to co in the coming future. Um, yeah. So we're really looking forward to seeing how we can help grow the Nordic region. Um, as a kind of follow up question to that, can you tell us a little bit more about which screens and locations are launching soon? Sure. Uh, next year, in 2024, we will be launching our brand new uh, transport uh, digital network in Oslo. Um, we have just won the biggest out of home contract in Norway. And we will have a total market share of close to 90% uh, for, for digital out of home in Oslo um, and around 65% of the of the national markets uh, in Norway. Um, so, so this contract flips um, the Norwegian market leader position in, in our favor. Uh, we will be launching new uh, digital formats and we will also be launching... Uh, digital interior advertising uh, in trams. Um, so next year will be a whole new era for, for digital out of home in, in the Norwegian market and, and for JC Deco. Uh, and of course, all our screens uh, will be available for, for programmatic uh, just as they are now. So, so we are really keen uh, to start working with 2024. Um, we just need to round uh, round off, um, finish off uh, 2023 first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what an exciting 2024 it will be with the launch of those new screens. I'm really looking forward to it. Definitely a big opportunity for you guys. Um, so what kind of brands are interested in your inventory? And have there been any changes or kind of trends in that demand recently? But we have had all, all types of verticals and, and brands. Uh, I would say the pool of advertisers now adding programmatic to their mix is, is just as fragmented as our normal mix of advertisers. Uh, what is different is that the advertisers are using out of home uh, bought programmatically uh, in a different part of their campaigns, the, the lower part of the funnel uh, as an addressable media channel. Uh, the advertiser now has a new tool uh, to consider in the lower part of the funnel. Um, what we also see uh, that we are really excited about is, is the new online uh, advertisers starting to activate uh, due to the fact that the traditional budget barrier to entry uh, is more or less gone. So... Uh, it's um, it's all types of advertisers and and um, they are they are adding it um, as part of their mix, but in in yeah in a, in a new uh, in a new part of their uh, campaign mix, I would say. Yeah, and that's awesome to hear because we also see that coming from other markets as well. The activation yeah. of that kind of full funnel cycle, as opposed to just kind of using programmatic out of home as kind of a branding exercise so it's really positive to hear that that's happening in the Nordic market as well um I guess as a kind of another follow-on question from that can you share with us any successful client campaign stories that you've worked on recently that kind of helped showcase the power of programmatic digital out of home uh, it's hard it's hard to pick just one campaign as we have had such an array of new programmatic advertisers this year. Uh, in particular, we have seen uh, an increase of new brands who have started to use programmatic out of home, which include IKEA, H&M, Cosmica, Red Bull, uh, DMB, a local bank, uh, just to name a few. Yeah, some, some really strong brands in there as well. And I know that you've definitely got a lot more um, big, well-known international brands coming through um the pipeline as well so yeah. another another really positive thing that we love to see um and finally before i let you go it would be great to get your predictions for the future of digital out of home in the next couple of years and where does programmatic fit in with that we think uh digital out of home will only continue to grow uh with double or maybe even triple digit growth uh triple for for programmatic yeah, perhaps um as the client learns uh, to utilize the possibilities within the channel uh, more, 
uh, and more and more. Uh, uh, this combined with the fact that we most likely will see new screens in new cities and arenas. Um, uh, this makes us certain that, you know, this growth will happen. Our new uh, metro networks will also be uh, a channel that we hope can bring new money to 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 the out of home channel uh, in total. Uh, as for programmatic, we foresee that this will account for, for somewhere around 20% of digital uh, out of home spend uh, in Norway in two to five, two to four years. Um, and in the Norwegian market alone, this will would equal somewhere between 100 and 150 Norwegian kroner. Uh, that's 10 to 13 million euros um, of out of home revenue that would be traded through programmatic pipes. So at the moment, uh, it's uh, it's a really exciting space to be, be in. Um, all vendors, uh, out of home companies are now uh, active um, in Norway at least. Um, and and more and more DSPs are, are um, coming uh, <laughs> to, to Norway as well or um, having demand for Norway. So, mm -hmm. so this mix and the agency is now giving us uh, more focus um, really um, makes me me positive. Uh, so so um, yeah, it's it's exciting. Yeah, definitely. I think that it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in not just the Nordics, but Norway um, over the next couple of years. The, you're on the cusp of becoming really big in the programmatic digital home space. So looking forward to it. Um, but it looks like we're at the end of today's interview. It was really great to catch up with you as always. Thank you so much for your time, Marius. We'll be sharing the recording of the VIEW blog and social channels. So please comment and ask any questions or give any recommendations on the types of topics you'd like to see us cover in our next interview.